as it was last week. Same with the 15th chapter. I wasn't finished, y'all. We just ready to go home. Same through the 15th chapter. You all have already been there. Amen. Amen. Verse number 11. <clears throat> Saint Luke, now that's in the New Testament, the third book. And, uh, chapter 15, verse number 11. You all read it with me. You all have that. It says, uh, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And uh, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And uh, he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. He took his journey into a uh, far country. And there uh, wasted his substance with uh, riotous living. Now, when he had spent all, there arose uh, a mighty famine in that land. And uh, he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his uh, belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself he said how many high servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger I will arise and uh, go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and uh, am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy high servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet uh, a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father cut off his speech and said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring him the fatted cow and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. I want to talk to thee about the lost and found. Amen. The lost and found. When I was a little boy in school, somewhere around by the principal's office, they used to have something called the lost and found. And that was a place where if you had lost something yeah. <laughs> and somebody else found it, right. they could turn it in there and they would keep it until somebody came and Amen. claimed it. Amen. Amen. And some things, and, and that was simple in school because generally speaking, you probably back then, because they didn't have cell phones like they got now. And you might have lost a ink pen or maybe a rain jacket or something. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And folk were willing to turn it in. Yeah. But you got to know the most valuable stuff. Uh -huh. Once you lose it, <laughs> y'all ain't saying that. You can just about count them as gone. Amen. Because sometimes the things have just enough value, yeah. it'll turn an honest person <laughs> uh -huh, into a dishonest person. Yeah. 
And you know what we used to say? Finders keepers, uh, losers weepers. Amen. And when you, once they say that, you can forget about whatever it is you lost. This chapter, Jesus uh, dealing with lost things, uh, he gives three parables, and all the parables have the same intent. But sometimes when you're talking to folk, and that was the good thing about Jesus, when he talked to folk, he could perceive what they were thinking. Yeah. Amen. He, he knew if they were getting what he said, or if they were missing the point. Yeah. And in this instance, Jesus used three different parables to give off the same point. The message was that whenever something valuable is lost, at whatever point it is found, there is always some degree of rejoicing. Amen, somebody. I said something valuable. Now, I'm not talking about something that didn't matter to you, but when something is of great importance or of great value and it is lost, once it is found, that is rejoicing. Not only that, if there is great value to it, you're going to search diligently until you find it. And Jesus talked about three things. He started the first parable that we dealt with on last week, the lost sheep. Sheep lose themselves. They get lost themselves. Amen. Nobody loses sheep. You put them in a set place and they wander off and they get lost themselves. And I told you last week that there is a slim chance that a sheep would wander back where he came from, but even if he did, that's an accident. Y'all ain't saying that. He didn't have the wet with him to find his way back home. He just was so lost until he lost up on the place where he's supposed to be. Amen. And we have to understand now, this next parable that Jesus gives deals with a lost coin. Yeah. And Jesus said that what woman, if a woman had a uh, shepherd, uh, pieces of silver yeah, uh -huh, all right. and she lost one yeah. what moment is it that wouldn't uh, go and sweep light a candle he oh, says yeah. sweep the house and search diligently yeah. until she finds it yeah. Palestinian women were given ten coins whenever they were married as a wedding gift and to lose one of those coins would be the same thing as losing their wedding ring. You understand, it had sentimental value. It wasn't like just losing any coin. So he said that they would sex the house. In other words, it's limited to the house. The coin was in the house, but it was lost. Y'all ain't saying that. Some of us in the house, but, but we lost. The coin could never no circumstances find itself. Yeah. The person would have to seek until they found the coin. Yeah. I ain't talking about when I said Dylan, I ain't talking about how my children look for stuff. You tell them, go in there and look on the dresser and see if you see my keys. And before they even get where the dresser is, they just come back and say, I ain't see it. Yeah. <laughs> Diligently searching is how you're looking when you almost late for work and can't find your car keys. Amen. When your cell phone is ringing and you can hear it but don't see it. Y'all ain't saying that. Diligently searching is searching to the point that I've got to have this. I cannot do without it. It's not just haphazardly looking for something. Amen. He says, What woman, if she had 10 pieces of silver? Uh -huh. yeah. Wouldn't search the whole house. She'll clean up, he said. Sweep in the house. Yes. Chance that the corn will make a noise. Amen. When she found it, running through the neighborhood, yes. telling her friends, rejoice with me. All right. I done found my lost corn. Yes. The man that lost the sheep. Jesus said, this man had a hundred sheep. Amen. And he only lost one. Yeah. That's 1% of his sheep. Amen, somebody. 1% yeah. of his sheep was lost. Yeah. But he left 99 and went and looked for the one. Yeah. Not only that, if anybody had 100 sheep, chances are they have a bunch of more stuff. Right. Amen, somebody. But he had 100 sheep. So 1% of 
of his sheep was lost, but it was significant enough for him to go look for the lost one. The woman with 10 pieces of silver, that's 10% of her silver was lost. One out of 10, uh -huh, that's, that's it. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Now, this man, he says, had two sons. <laughs> that's 50% of his sons were lost. The boy liked the sheep. He chose to go astray. You heard the story, but let me just get you a couple of nuggets and I'll let you go here. He said, same man had two sons and the baby boy said to his father, just look, you're living longer than I thought you would. Just, just go ahead and that's what I'm going to get when you're done. Go and give it to me now. All right, all right. And he said, Ryan, wait, you have living so long, I'm going to be able to... <laughs> I ain't gonna be able to enjoy nothing to yeah, wait on you. That's what you might as well say because you don't get the inheritance until the father dies. But their custom was that the elder brother would get double portion. So that means that this young boy would have gotten one third of what his father had. Yeah, right, man. Father didn't argue with him. Amen. He said that he simply divided. He's living among them. Amen. You know, sometimes we get out of the will of God. All right, all right. Want to go our own way and do stuff how we think makes yeah. sense. You understand? You got to hope you only live one time. Yeah. Let me go ahead and uh, live it up. You understand? Right. You know the mindset we got. Let me enjoy myself while I'm young. And when I get old, I'll, I'll come back in. I'm going to come in before it's too late. As long as you make it in. That, that's the mindset. And that wouldn't be bad if everybody was going to get old, but you got to know that there are young folk that die as well as old folk. God, just like this father, allows us to have a choice. This father could have told the boy, I ain't giving you nothing. You're going to wait like everybody else. And I've told you before, God could have made us where we couldn't go nowhere but the church. Amen. 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 He could have designed our hands where they couldn't go nowhere but up toward him. Amen. He could have designed our mouth where it couldn't say nothing but hallelujah. Y'all ain't saying that. God could have done this, but God is a God of joy, and he's a merciful God. Amen. So God, this father, the scripture said, divided up his living among his sons. The scriptures are not many days after. The other son got all his stuff, everything. And took his journey into a far country. Now, the way the scripture reads, this, this, this father was a wealthy father. He had hired servants. And he had an abundance of food. So this, this, this man had plenty. And, and I told you before, sometimes money will make you crazy. Oh, Stuff right. and things will, will make folk who had some sense don't have no sense no more. Y'all ain't saying that. And, and this boy, and I, and I can understand this man being driven to the fool with money, but some folk go crazy and ain't got too good niggas to run against one another. Y'all ain't saying that. Some folk get a dollar more than you and they think, oh, shut up.
know what stuff means sometimes. Prodigal just means wasteful. <laughs> and so if, 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 if the Bible were rewritten, he probably wouldn't even be in there. Some of us would probably be in his place. Y'all ain't saying that. This, this man was wasteful, and, and, and this is what we talk about. But the wastefulness was not his real problem. The wastefulness really turned out to be a good thing because he had to waste everything to realize he was lost. Y'all ain't saying that. And some of us, God, have to allow to hit rock bottom. Wastefulness was the least of his problem. In fact, wastefulness is what caused him to come back where he should be. This man, the Bible said, wasted his substance with riotous living. You know, in other words, partying all the time. Yeah. Let me just say that so y'all don't think he was doing that no worse than what we do. All right. he, he wasted his living. We, we love to celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. You understand, we, we got to go out and celebrate that we done divorce. A divorce party. A hurricane party. Yeah. I lost my job party. Y'all ain't saying that, huh? Amen. We don't just celebrate good stuff. <laughs> celebrate good stuff. We crazy enough to celebrate bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, I'm on the beach. Amen. When the hurricane comes, talking about a hurricane party. Yeah. Amen. Mm -mm. He just riders living. Yeah. Wasting his substance. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wasting his substance. Amen. And some of us determine our self-worth by stuff and things. Amen. You understand that? We, yeah. we are determined that if we could just live in a certain neighborhood yeah. and, and just get a certain kind of house, we're somebody. Yeah. And the problem with that is that when you lose that house. When, when you get put out of that neighborhood, you don't somehow find out that you are nobody. I don't value myself based on what I have or don't have, but I thank God because the scripture says without him we are nothing, but with God we can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens us. So my hope is not in what I have. You know how we get grown and think we know everything. Amen. When he spent it, when he had spent it, everything he had. Amen. Now I want you to be careful of how Jesus told this story. He said that I rose a famine in that land. Yeah. <laughs> the famine was in the land where the boy was. Y'all yeah. understand that. See, sometimes the scripture would say that was a famine all over the land. Yeah. But in this case, it said that was a famine. In, a famine means ain't, ain't that deep. Right, right, right. The crop done dried up. Yeah, and it ain't just that. These people broke, but everybody broke it. And it's, it, you, you understand that. Nobody get anything to eat. And this happened not where the father was, but in the land where the boy took.
another one. For the good. There was a family in a mighty family in that land where the boy went. And he began to be in want. Now the way I read this story, chances are when the boy got to the far country, he very well could have been one of the wealthiest ones in the country. But now there have come a mighty family. And he has wasted and spent all that he had and now he is in war. And if he was wealthy and lost everything and he's in war, so what do you think about those who were there that had less than him? He went to heaven and sat down and says, Then went from heaven so much money he didn't have to work. <laughs> See, sometimes you got, even if you feel that way, you might need to get your own piece of job just to keep you from spending. <laughs> See, that at least be eight hours you can't go to the store. Y'all ain't saying that. Sometimes I don't mind. And you get bored and you get unsatisfied with stuff. Y'all ain't saying that. And that's why we go in debt because we got so much time on our hands. Instead of giving time to God, we shopping and spending. It. And it feel good popping the card out. But what don't feel good, y'all ain't saying that. When that bill start coming, you have to understand that everything that you get, you, you know, you can pay now, you won't pay later. Ain't nothing free. Y'all better get that. <laughs> uh, so he joined himself to a citizen of that country and they didn't give him no good job I ain't talking about it Monsanto <laughs> no he wasn't working for good power but they sent him out there to feed the hogs and you know for Jews uh, that would have never been an occupation because swine to them were unclean animals. But this boy now, and I, that's why I tell you, Satan will take you to a point of no return. And hey, that was something to the simple song that said, don't let the devil ride. Because yeah, if you let him ride, he's going to want to drive. And if he drive, he's going to go where he want to go, not where you want to go. And some of us dealing and dabbling and playing around with the devil. Y'all better get this, and, and the devil is going to take us to a point of no return. Yeah, yeah. And when you first meet the devil, he might be by himself. But don't you fool yourself, he don't travel alone. Hey Amen, he got some friends, he got some imps, some allies, and he'll pull all of them out on you. You just try to pull away, you just tell the devil I don't want to play no more, y'all ain't saying that. And see what he put out a whole He sent him in the field to feed the swine. The lowest of the low. Yeah. With no choice jobs. Yeah. And he would have well, been glad to just eat what the hogs was right, eating. Right. And didn't nobody give him nothing. Yeah. Anybody here get in line that as long as you riding high and you got money. Yeah. Everybody will be your friend. Yeah. And I ain't trying to say it on Sunday, but the blues singer said nobody uh, wants you when you're down and out. Yeah. Right. Amen. But as long as you, you got some money, yeah. uh -huh. you got some so-called friends. Yeah. But when the money is you, that's how you can check them now. When the money gone. You, I'm going to let you lie one time. Just tell them it's gone when it ain't gone. Y'all ain't saying that. Just, just to see. Hey, hey man, just tell them it's gone. As long as you the life of the party. As long as you buying all the rounds. Come on, child, I got you. Hey man, you got some friends. You got some lifetime friends. If your money lasts a lifetime, you got some folks who will help you spend your money. Now he done got broke. And it said he, he was so hungry he was about to eat the hog food. This lot. That's where the devil will take you. Yeah. From eating in a fancy 
dining room. Yeah. From eating in fancy restaurants. Uh -huh. yeah. To eating out of the garbage can. Yeah. And somebody said, how can this be? Well, you just keep going on your own way. You, you just keep on entertaining the devil. And I promise he'll take you to a point of no return. And he said, nobody gave to him. Isn't it something I've heard folks say, when I had money, I was trying to help everybody. And, uh, then when I got broke, <laughs> all of a sudden ain't nobody got nothing. Maybe that had happened to y'all. Maybe, maybe that just got me. When I have a little sapata and then when you get something. All right. All right. Come on. He said nobody gave nothing to us. And because of this, and God has to position us like this sometimes. Because of the fact that he was a long way from home. And he has spent all his money and didn't have nothing. Amen. And he was sunk down to the lowest of the low. Oh, he was working in the unclean hall pen. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he was hungry to the point of thinking about eating the hogs. Yeah. And uh, nobody gave him nothing. Yeah. And I like this man, the last part says some of us would be in here instead of him if they wrote it over. <laughs> because this man didn't start pointing fingers. This man didn't blame God. This man didn't say, if it was a God, he wouldn't let all this happen to me. But uh, the scripture said, when this man thought things over, when what God put on him began to sink in, yeah, yeah. Mm, this man, when he came to himself, yeah. and I don't care uh, who you have that are lost, uh, they first got to come to themselves. Yeah. And you and them have to realize that they are not themselves. Yeah. You understand that when a person gets Alzheimer's uh -huh. and somebody, they do something out of character, yeah. we'll quickly say they're not themselves. Y'all understand that? Amen. But some of us are doing stuff that's out of character. All right. It ain't just out of character for us. Yeah. It's out of character for anybody. Y'all yeah. understand that? And instead of saying or admitting that they're not themselves, yeah. amen, we'll make excuses. Yeah. And after a while, we will come to accept whatever it is that they're doing. Amen. I don't care who it is, nobody likes to inflict pain on their own body. Amen. Nobody in their right mind wants to ingest poison. Amen. But yet we do it every day and think nothing of it. And I want to say, before I get ahead of myself, that all of us are either lost or found. You understand that because we were born, the scriptures and sin, and we were shaping in iniquity. Yeah. That is to say, all of us at some point have been lost. And all the ones who were found are those who have accepted Jesus. And I marvel at how on our uh, natural birthday, we'll celebrate from one year old Y'all ain't sound right till whatever year we die. Yeah. When our birthday come around, we'll celebrate. Yeah. Now I don't understand how folk can say they've been born again yeah. and not find that something worth celebrating. Yeah. The first time the baby was born, yeah. they were born in sin. Yeah. They were born lost. Yeah. They were born helpless and hopeless. Yeah. And still we celebrate every time that day comes. But when God had found us and have given us a new life, a new start, y'all ain't saying that. 
we ought to be glad and we ought to be celebrating. The scripture says when this man came to himself, he began to rationalize in his own mind. He said, how many, this man, not like this sheep, are uh, the lost coin. This man was lost, but he had to come back on his own. And he said, uh, when he came to himself, he said, how many my father has. In other words, I really don't have no business way over here in this far country. When I was at home, I had everything I needed. Some of us with God, we know we had all we need. Still decided to walk off from God. Yeah, he said, how my father has who got bread to spare. In other words, they're not my father. They work for my father. And my father is so generous to them that they work for him. So they got extra and left over. How much I can have if I would just be with my father. It's good to stay home and be there as long as you can. But it's even better to know Yeah. <laughs> 
the nervousness that's the shame. I let that down and now I got a face from You can imagine that slow walk home. You know how we need a mess up.
Amen. You give me a couple more minutes, I won't mess with this next one. Yeah. The scripture says, when the oldest boy who never left home, he was out there in the field. And uh, as he got closer, he heard music and dancing. He called the servant and said, what's going on here? And uh, somebody told him, shut your brother to come home. And your father done killed the fatty cow because he received him safe and sound. And this boy symbolizes folk who are in the church, who have been in the church all their life and think they ain't never done wrong. They don't think nothing now when somebody gets saved. Who done wasted all you 
work for us in a foreign country. You now done killed the fatter cow. Look at what Jesus said. He said, he said to him, son, you are always with me. And that's the good thing about staying with the Lord. He will take care of you. You may not get it, but somebody else got it.
You got a couple of things you can do. You can do like the boy and just come to yourself. Think about what you've done for you. Think about what you used to have. Think about how sweet it was. Think about what mama had. Think about the peace grandmama had. Some of them boast about how strong grandmama was. Grandmama wasn't strong, but she had the Lord.